Hallelujah. Let a living soul shout, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, please, if you have any reason to thank God at, at all, I need you to stand on your feet and give God a louder, Hallelujah. Help me say to your neighbor, say neighbor, even if you don't have any reason to thank God at all, thank him for life. Thank him because you can raise your hands. Thank him because you can lift your legs. Thank him because you can jump. Thank him. Thank him. This morning, we have a message. The song says, thank you, Lord, for all you have done. Be blessed in Jesus' name. It's a very simple song. If you want to join us, you're free to join us. Thank you, Lord, for all you've done for us. Hallelujah. Tragedy has come and place. All kinds of diseases, people are sleeping away. Economy's bad, people don't get Living on down the street And the drug abuse I'm saying They cannot deal Mortgage and robbers The best thing to be saved But you've been my protection Every step of the way And I want to say Thank you Lord For all you've done for me Yeah It's good to be
for protection every hour. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. I want to thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you.
want you to connect with the grace in this house this morning. I want you to know that God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. As he has spoken, so shall he do. And he said this morning, I am turning your situation around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Today is not really the day of testimony. Mm. Because the testimonies are mounting. Yeah, they are coming step by step, step by step, step by step. We will get there. But don't look at me the way you looked at me last week. Hey. It's in your own interest. It is in your own interest to look unto the God of all the earth. Woo! The one that turned my situation Woo! around. It's not about me. It's about him. Please tell your neighbor, it's not about Ibukwa to short term. It's about the King of Kings. It's about the Lord of Lords. How it's about the ruler of the universe. It's about the one that hey! is the one with me, the God of all the earth, the one who there is no darkness at all. I can see everything is turning around, turning around, turning around, oh my goodness, I can see everything is turning around. Father, we receive grace to do what you have asked us to do here today. And because you are God, you will do what you said you will do. And the glory will go to you. No man will share in the glory. It's not about our praying. It's not about our faithfulness. Because if you are to count that, we will not be qualified. But Lord, it's about your faithfulness. Is about your word. Let your word be present in our midst today. And let it accomplish purpose. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. If you have breath and you can shout, shout. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Anytime I have opportunity to hold the microphone, I thank the God of heaven and I thank my husband. Reason is that if my husband doesn't make it possible for me to hold this microphone, I wouldn't be able to do so. Can you celebrate this man of God? Okay, I'm looking at those that are helping me. I'm seeing those that are not helping me. It is well. It is well. Amen. Maybe before I go into the message, I want to thank God for the church of God. So many people sent me messages. People came to see me. People called different kinds of things. Thank God that our calls are joyful calls. Because it could have been anything else. But we'll, go to know, we'll get to know about that later. This morning I'm speaking on the topic, break forth into singing. Break forth into singing. And our text is Isaiah 54, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah 54, that's our theme verse uh, scripture for this month. Verses 1, I want to start from verse 1. There's a command there at the beginning of that. It says, sing. 
Tell your neighbor, sing. sing. It doesn't matter how good you are in singing. Just sing. Sing, O barren. Thou that is not bare, break forth into singing and cry aloud. Thou that is not travail with child, for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife, saith the Lord. Verse 2. Enlarge the place of thy tent and let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitations. Spare not, lengthen thy cords and strengthen thy sticks. And verse 3. For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Oh, you can't even say amen. amen. We've been talking about greater enlargement, and I'm going to be looking at some scriptures that I've not taken as the theme text, but we'll go from one to the other. Enlargement has been defined as expansion, as growth, as extension, amplification, addition. Enlargement is making it bigger, making it larger. And the word greater implies that there had been some measure of greatness. Something had been great. And you are asking to make it greater. You have had an experience. You have had testimonies. I can tell you I've had testimonies. But I got greater testimonies in the month of June in Four Square Socorro. Oh, hallelujah. If I were you, I would connect with it. You want to surpass the previous experiences that you had. You cannot compare them at all. The kind of things that you go through when you are talking about greater, greater enlargement. Today is the last Sunday in June. And you must experience your own greater enlargement. I don't know what your past experiences have been. But today is your day of breaking forth. And it's your day of breaking forth into singing. <laughs> on, was it on Friday? On Friday in my house. On Friday in my house, by reason of some things that happened, because I'm not giving my testimony today, by reason of some things, I just had a phone call, a phone call. Partner, are you watching the television? I said, the television here is not working. The television is not working. Somebody said, no, the television is working. DSTV is not working. Okay, but television is not working. Did you hear what happened? Just hearing that, songs came. Shouting came. And things just changed. Things will change around you today in the name of Jesus. If you remember divine recitation at the beginning of this month, as we stepped onto this altar, I don't know if you remember how the meeting started. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. How many of you were there? I mean, don't help me sing it if you didn't come. Were you there? If you were there, shout hallelujah. And if you were not there, shout hallelujah, Sha. Because we will borrow you some of the testimonies. Hallelujah. Because the first verse of that text, of that text that we have, it says, sing. It says, sing. 
So in whatever circumstance you find yourself, sing. Whether you are suspended or you are apprehended, you are promoted, you are demoted, sing. Whether you are well or you are unwell, what do you do? Sing. He didn't say those that have children sing. He said, sing, O oh barren. Sing, O oh barren. You that you are struggling, where will, when will my children come? When will my husband come? When will my job come? Any form of barrenness, he says, sing. If you will sing, shout hallelujah. As for me and my house, we will sing unto the Lord. I just made up my mind from that first day. By the things that the Lord told us. When the senior pastor was introducing the theme for the month. He said this is going to be a month of singing. It will be a month of singing. Some of us will hear this theme. What we do is we first of all look at who is speaking. Who is speaking? What is he talking about? Uh, is that not how he said it last month? Did it happen to me? Please, just, let's just leave that one. If you look at me with the eyes of last week, you are on your own. There are some people here that are going to give their own testimony that will be greater than my own. Before you can sing, there are voices to note. The first voice to note is the voice of the devil. What has the devil said? What has the devil said? Well, I'm taking the devil first because he's the one under my feet. But that's the voice that we hear the most. That's the one that shouts the most. Open your Bibles to 1 Kings chapter 17. I'm going to be as fast as I can. 1 Kings 17. Because we have some things to do here today. And I know you are going back, breaking forth into singing. If you like, don't say amen. Please, people that like it, say amen. At every junction of this ministration, if you like it, just say amen. Elijah, in 1 Kings chapter 17, he made a pronouncement in verse 1. He declared some things. And you would have thought, as the Lord God of Israel liveth before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. And almost immediately, Famine started. And this Elijah, the Lord told him, go to the water brooks. Go to the brooks. I have commanded a raven to feed you there. But in verse 7, the Bible says, and it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. Why was there no rain in the land? Elijah declared it. But the fact that there was no water in the brook is the devil's presentation. Excuse me. Do you think that the God of heaven did not know that by reason of the pronouncement that Elijah had made that that brook was going to dry up? Did you think that the ruler of the universe was not aware that that brook would dry up. But the brook dried up. There might be brooks in your life that have dried up. There might be brooks, there might be waters where God himself has sent you to. Is the God of heaven that sent you there. Is the ruler of the universe that sent you there. I say this openly. I have never, never in my life knelt down when 
I was in the Ministry of Information and Communications, I never knelt down one day and said, God, make me permanent secretary. I never did. But in his mercy, in his goodness, he chose to send me there. But the brook dried up. The brook in your life that dried up, God will make a way. Today, God is making a way for every brook that has dried up in the name of Jesus. Paul and Silas, what they were doing was to do the work of the master. But if you open your Bibles to Acts chapter 16, in Acts chapter 16, I want people to open their Bibles. Do you have a Bible? Open your Bible. Forget about multimedia. Yes, they are there to help us, but open your own Bible. If you have a Bible, show me your Bible. Can you lift up your Bible? Say, this is my Bible. It is the word of God. I'm instructed by it every day. And I'm perfected by it every day. If you have a Bible, shout hallelujah. It's now not fashionable for people to come to church with Bibles. Acts chapter 16, verses 23 and 24. Sorry. Acts. Okay, 16. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, they cast them into prison charging the jailer to keep them safely. Who, having received such a charge, that's the jailer, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. That's the language of the devil. That's the voice of the devil. And when your feet are in the stocks, and it seems that there is no way. Your back is to the wall. The tendency is that you begin to say things that are not right. You begin to imagine things that will not be. I must tell you, it is not easy when you are in that prison. When you are in the prison of life. When devil says, yes, stay in that prison. And let's see what you will do. But my God, my father, the owner of the universe, he says, hey, he will make a way where there is no way. There was a Shunammite woman in 2 Kings chapter 4. She was just there doing the right thing that she felt that she needed to do. She created a place for the man of God. She did what was right in the sight of God. She created an avenue for the man of God to have rest anytime he's passing by. And the man of God said, what can we do for this woman? And she said, I dwell amongst my people. The men are familiar with this. I dwell amongst my people. But Elijah, Elisha would not let, him, let her go. Say, no, you cannot. We cannot just leave you like this. You must have a son. According to the time of life, by this time, by this season, you would have your son. You will embrace a son. And then she had a son. And then the next thing, in verse 13. Oh, okay, no, that's not the verse that I'm looking for. Verse 18. In verse 18, it fell on a day. That's what I was told. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day. It fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And verse 19, and he said unto his father, my head, my head. And he said to Elijah, carry him to his mother. Verse 20, and when they had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon. And then what happened? What happened? Died. That's the voice of the devil. The promise that God gave him. You did not go, she did not go to apply. She didn't go for IVF. She didn't go to look for anything. She didn't go to doctors that please help me. This is what I want. Her case was that she was staying inside her house. And then the man of God said, this is what God has asked me to say to you. And then this child has come. How can that child die? 
Is it possible for that child to die? I want you to answer me. Because that is the voice of the devil. Whose report will you believe? The second person that is important in this matter is you. What have you said? What have you said? I don't know how you have defined your present state. How you have placed yourself. You can come to church every Sunday. That the main reason why you are coming is to target uh, the kitchen downstairs. You have defined yourself. That the definition of the totality of your life is to come and collect one bowl of rice. That's the definition. Or if you come into the church and people are sitting by you and they have to be watching their sides, their front, their back because you are there. And then all that you have come to do is to stretch out your arm and take their phone. You have defined yourself. There was a widow woman that as Elijah was passing by, they said that she was the wife of the sons of the prophets. So it means that she is somebody that is supposed to know what the word of God says. She is supposed to know how God works. Second Kings chapter 4 and verse 2. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What hast thou in the house? Can we read together what she said? And she said, Thine handmaid had not anything in the house. She said they don't have anything in the house. What are you saying about yourself? You are saying that you have no use. There's nothing that you can do. For as long as you go around every Sunday soliciting, you are saying that you, you cannot make yourself, you cannot go beyond where you are. So when you are coming to church, it will remind me of a brother that we had in Lagos. I sat him down one day and I said, please, can you give me how you get your own money and you spend money? Because he was always going around begging after every service. So he said he was earning, I can't remember now, let's say 20,000 naira a month. But he spends about 50,000 a month. So he said he augments that with what he will get from brethren in church. So every week he's targeting some people. That's his own definition of himself. Let me just share this testimony. My sister's friend got married. And when they had all the celebrations, it was a very beautiful celebration. They finished and husband and wife retired into their room. The mother-in-law came in the night and knocked. And said, before you start, let me tell you some things that you need to know. So he sat the two of them down and then she said, in our family, we don't have children on time. If you now have the misfortune of having a son as your firstborn, that firstborn will die. That it has been like that for generations. And that is the way it is with us. So I just want you people to know so that you don't feel bad about it. That that is one thing that is no good about our family. The sister got up and said, thank you very much. We have a story in my own family too. It, our own is even worse than your own. In our own family, all of us, we are destined to die. All of us all together. 
not just men that if you give back to a boy or you give back to a girl, all of us, we just die, 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 die like that. But our father, our father is a very kind man. So he asked our father and our father said he will go and meet somebody that is better than us. Then that person gave his own firstborn as a sacrifice. They killed that man. And the moment that blood was shed, our own situation just turned around. He said, Mama, be very glad, be happy. Because of me, your son will not die. Because of me, our children will not die. We will have boys as firstborn, as secondborn, as thirdborn. None of them will die. So the man said, the woman said, so who is this your own father? He said, the God of all the earth, the ruler of the universe, the one that is beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth. Mama walked away quietly. This couple, they have four sons. Their sons have all married. Their, their children have children. They have boys, they have girls. From that time, nobody has died in that place. Why? For my sake. I want you to declare, because of me. The situation will change. It is what you like. Say with your mouth. If you like, be looking at me. No problem. I will say for myself, because of me, everything will be rearranged. And I will be able to break forth into singing in the name of Jesus. What do you think that that woman will think of this, of this girl? Respect her beyond any recognition. Because she said, their own family, where she is coming from, and that family is your family. The third one, what has God said? And what is God saying about you? You need to know what God is saying about you. In 2 Kings, that same 2 Kings 17, verse 2, the Bible says, And the word of the Lord, oh, sorry, I think that is 1 Kings. 1 Kings. 17 and verse 2. The word of the Lord came unto him saying, Hey, ladies and gentlemen, has the word of the Lord come to you? What has God said concerning the matter? He is the one that knows the end from the beginning. In between the end and the beginning is a very lonely road. Three years of sitting at home is a very lonely road. But blessed be the God of all the earth. <laughs> it got to a point, it's as if, let the thing wait small, I did enjoy this one. It's a very lonely road. You don't know how it works out. My phones, <laughs> apart from receiving calls from men and brethren after service, uh, from Sister Fina, or from... <laughs> you didn't hear any calls again. But I can tell you, my phone itself cried on Saturday. Ah, ah, kilo day. You want to kill me? At the time it went off. Hallelujah. This, this group is not making me happy. And that's because you don't understand. You don't understand. The Lord will lift you up. I know Deputy Governor understands what I'm talking about. He knows how his phone was ringing. And he knows how it rings now after a while. Eh? I hope I'm correct, sir. Even church. Even church. Hallelujah. That's for another day. 
And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, What did he say? Verse 3. Get thee hence instructions, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook cherries that is before Jordan. There's another one, second king, sorry, still first kings, verse 17, verse 8, chapter 17, verse 8. The word of the Lord came unto him, saying, if you remember, it was verse 7, where I was talking about the brook that dried up. He went back to God, and then to ask the master, what is the way forward? And he gave him another direction, and he says, Get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. And I like this one very much. Please go on. So he arose and went to Zarephath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering up sticks. And he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. So, he, and as she was going to fetch it, he, you know, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, in addition to that water, uh, some sandwich. Just bring a little sandwich in your hand. And uh, verse 12, uh uh, say, in Bolebo. You said, it's water you said you wanted. Now you have had a sandwich. The next thing you will ask for tea. You will ask for juice or whatever it is. And she said, she is the one speaking here. As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, I am gathering two sticks that I may go in and dress it for me and my son that we may eat it and die. What kind of a testimony is this? The man of God was standing in front of you. Verse 14. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail, until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. The God of heaven has asked me to tell you, if you will obey his command, if you will do what he asks you to do today, your barrel of meal shall not waste. Yeah. Until the season of hardship in Nigeria rolls over, until the season of famine holds, rolls over, God will sustain you. Yeah. I said God will sustain you yeah. in the name of Jesus. Because God has said I want to ask you is it the devil's voice that you want to keep is it even your own voice you want to keep or it is, is it the voice of the king of kings and the lord of lords what he has asked you to do is to sing what the god of all the earth has asked you to do in this time of trouble in this time of pain in this time of wait is to sing. If only you can wake up in the, in the day and wake up in the night and tell yourself, I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and the riders he has thrown into the sea. Because you have an experience that you had with him, it will take you to a higher level. The Bible says, that God told them in Psalm 105, verse 13, Psalm 105, verse 13. They went from place to place. And when they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, can you go on? He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved, reproved kings for their sakes. And he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. That's his word to me. I don't know what his word is to you. But between God said and it came to pass, there's a time. 
there's a time. And it is faith that can hold you there. Finally, what he expects of you is that you will enlarge, enlarge your tents. We used to have a benevolent Sunday here. And by the grace of God, it will come back. Whatever has held Benevolent Sunday back, I break that bound this morning in the name of Jesus. The effect of it is that things that we used to throw out every year, because what we do is that we look into our wardrobe, we look into our kitchen, we look into our storehouses, anything that you have not used for the past one year, throw them out. It was in throwing them out that new ones came. If you have not thrown them out, new ones don't have space to stay. I don't know if you have the experience that I have. That's my experience. Instead of you buying more wardrobes, that you will be keeping more clothes, instead of you moving them into Ghana must go and keeping them under your bed, get them out of your house. There are IDPs, though I, I know where, I recommend you share amongst brethren. Get your clothes, get your clothes to people that you know need them. Send them out. What God has asked me to tell you is to clear the ground. You know when you want to farm, you clear the ground so that you will have space. You need space. You need space for what is coming. You need space for what is coming. There's a, a harvest of fat things. There's a harvest of fat things. I said it that there's a harvest of fat things. There's an avalanche that is coming upon this assembly. It is only for people that connect with what I'm talking about. There's an avalanche of blessing. There's an avalanche of glory. There's an avalanche of joy that is coming. It's coming in, it's in large numbers. It is there for you whether you are sitting in front or you are sitting at the back. If you do not connect, it will pass you by. God has asked me to warn you. When you begin to see, make sure that you keep your mouth. When you begin to see things happen in the lives of people, keep your mouth. Otherwise, it may not be good. Finally, finally, in this situation that we are in, shout unto the Lord. The shout of joy is coming in your household. I don't know what you have waited for for so long. All that he has asked me to tell you is that you should stand up this morning. And we are going to just sing the time is fast spent. But I will not go without taking this song. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. That's the only thing that we have. I did not go to any babalawo. I did not go to check anything up. I did not ask anyone that is not in the church of God to do anything for me. All that I looked up onto, my eyes were focused on the master. It was tough. It was difficult. It was not easy. But I, my hope is built on nothing less. Please my can. hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest rain, but only lean on Jesus' Oh.
one second. Sometimes it's as if God has forgotten you. It's as if he's no longer there. It's as if the word will not come to pass. But his word is yea and amen. I stand upon the word of God. I stand upon my testimony. I stand upon the righteousness of God. And I declare unto you, you will not be put to shame. When darkness hides his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging rays in every heart and so me to pray because there's a part to this when he will come when he will come with trumpet sound are you in a frame to meet with him it is not about promotion it is not about food it is not about housing I'm saying when everything is finished where would you be if you are in this congregation this morning and you want that when the trumpet will sound that you will not be left behind that you will be able to partake of his glory i want you to please help yourself and help me by lifting up your hand this morning so i can pray with you that when the trumpet will sound ah that i in him may be found if your hand is raised up it's not because of me please come forward i want to pray with you i want to bring you before god as many hands that i saw up there if you are serious about it please come forward i want to pray with you this morning because it's because of you that god has made this day to be it's because of you and i want to assure you your testimony will be greater than my own in the name of jesus i want you to begin to confess your sins before god and be asking the lord that he will be able to accept you in the beloved when, when. That are here at the altar. I hope we know that you have not come onto Ibukun Rishote. You have not come onto anyone. You have not even come to Foursquare. 
you have come unto the God of all the earth. So I want you to talk to God yourself and ask God that ah, when the trumpet will sound, I will be found in you. When the trumpet will be sounding, I will be part of them in the name of Jesus. Maybe you are out there. Maybe you have given your life to Jesus, but you are not sure that when the trumpet will sound, that you will be ready. I want you to pray at this time. I want you to cry unto God. I will not miss it. I will not miss the trumpet. I will not miss the coming of the Lord. I will not miss what he has called me to do. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Lord, I thank you for these ones that are on the altar. I ask in the name of Jesus that they will not just come to the altar and disappear. I ask El Shaddai God that you will establish them in righteousness. You will establish them in your glory. They will stand, O oh God. They will be established in righteousness. Father, they will be children of God indeed. They will not be lost to the world. They will not go back. They will stand and they will wait upon you, O oh God. Our Father, I, I ask, O oh God, that there will be transference of grace even upon their lives, even as I lay hands upon them. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I ask God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that there will be a connection with you. They will connect with heaven and they will stand forever. They will stand forever. When you will come with trumpet sound, none of them will be missing. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please could you stand and please could you go with these people. Go with the pastors. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. In the name of Jesus. On Christ the soul. Father, in the name of Jesus, we stand on Christ, the solid rock, and I declare that every single soul that is represented here, when the trumpet will sound, none of them will be missing. None of us will be missing. And Father, as many as are going through situations that has kept them for years, that has kept them for months, that has kept them for decades and it's like it will never happen because Lord you chose to let me have a testimony father their testimonies will spring forth father that's your word to me this morning you said their testimony will spring forth and their testimony will be larger than my own in the name of Jesus and everything that God has done it shall be forever nothing will be removed from it nothing will be added to it you God you do it that men will fear before you thank you father